Hi, I'm Emily of British Girl Bakes and I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful cake that looks like a bunch of flowers. To frost the cake with a stem-like texture, I'm using buttercream that I've tinted with green gel food colour and I'll be using my offset spatula to apply it and later give it texture and my frosting smoothers in between. I'm spreading the buttercream onto the cake with the offset spatula and this is my 4 minute buttercream. For the crumb coat I like to use a plastic frosting smoother because it's really quick to scrape off any excess frosting after each scrape. I'm going to cover the top of this cake with flowers so I'm not doing a final coat on the top of the cake, just on the sides. And I like to use my acrylic smoother for the final coat because it's heavy and it has a wide base which makes it easy to line up straight against the side of the cake. And I love the smooth finish it leaves on the frosting. I'm not worrying about the top of the cake being untidy because that's going to be part of the design of the cake and it's okay that the frosting isn't completely smooth because I'm going to add texture to that next. I'm using my offset spatula for this next part and I'm holding it with the back against the base of the cake gliding it upwards in a swooshing motion while applying just a bit of pressure against the cake to indent these vertical grooves. And this makes the cake look a bit like it's a bunch of flower stems. I'm overlapping each swoosh so that the texture is random and I'm leaving these nice peaks at the top which are going to form a wall around the first row of flowers on top and they'll be covering up the bases of the flowers. When frosting starts to build up on my spatula, it leaves these little flecks behind. So at that point, I'm scraping the frosting off and wiping the spatula clean on a paper towel. And then I'm going back to continue with my swishes. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please click the thumbs up button. I also teach several online decorating courses and you can find out more by clicking the link up at the top of the screen or I've put the link in the description below. When I've gone all the way around the cake, I'm going back to the places where there are these little flecks of frosting and I'm doing another swoosh over the top of it to tidy it up. As you can see, the top still looks really messy, but it'll be covered up in a few minutes. I'm chilling the cake before adding the flowers so that the green frosting sets and gets hard, and I'm saving the leftover green frosting to make some leaves later. I'm covering the frosting up with cling film, pressing it right down against the surface of the buttercream, and this way the buttercream won't crust while it's sitting. Having the right consistency of your buttercream is really important for these Russian tips, and I've added a bit more powdered sugar than normal to this so that it's stiffer, and you can see that it's quite stiff by these peaks of frosting. I've divided it into different bowls and I've used red and blue gel colours in different amounts to make these shades of pink and purple. And for this white and yellow bowl, I haven't mixed the colours completely so that I can get a nice, uneven, blended effect. I'm using piping bags with these three Russian tips and I'm using different combinations of colours in each bag. And I go over the techniques for this in my tutorial, Five Tricks for Russian Tips, which you can watch by clicking the link at the top of the screen or in the description below. My cake has been in the fridge for about 30 minutes and I'm checking to make sure the frosting holds its shape when I touch it so that the tips don't mess it up if they knock it. And it's very firm when I touch it, so now I'm going to use my piping bags with these Russian tips and I'm starting each flower just a little bit inside of the wall of green frosting around the edge of the cake and angling the flower so it faces outwards and upwards like it would in a bouquet of flowers. I'm alternating between the tips as I go around the cake and then after piping the first ring of flowers I'm spreading on a pile of green frosting in the middle and this is going to make a nice mound so that the next row of flowers sits a bit higher up and they're more visible from the sides of the cake. I'm using some more of the green frosting in a piping bag and this is a leaf tip and the way this one works is when you hold it, you should be able to see this triangular bit on the side, like an open mouth, it looks a bit like Pac-Man. And as you squeeze it to pipe a leaf, you apply the pressure at the base of the leaf. And as you pull the tip away, you release your pressure on the bag at the same time. And that leaves a nice peak behind, which is like the point of a leaf. I'm piping these in a ring above the row of flowers that I've already piped. And that adds just a different color between these flowers and the next ones I'm about to pipe. And then I'm going around the bottom of these flowers to fill in any gaps between the flowers and the green stems on the cake. Another row of flowers. And if your frosting is nice and stiff like mine is, if one of your petals goes rogue like this one here, you can just gently push it back into place using your offset spatula. More flowers. 
more leaves, and a final flower at the top. I'm scraping off some smudges of frosting from the cake board, just using my offset spatula because the frosting has already set, so it's a bit too hard to wipe off with a paper towel. And I love how this cake looks from the top. I love these pastel colours and that they're all similar tones, although they'd look fun with bright colours as well. I'm putting the cake back in the fridge again, just to make sure the frosting has set, because I need the green part of the cake to be really solid for this next step. I'm leaving it in here for about an hour and then cutting my ribbon, and if you cut it a diagonal it looks really neat. And I'm wrapping this around the cake to guess approximately how long I want the ribbon to be and then cutting the other end also at a diagonal. And now I'm just tying the bow around the cake. I'm not excellent at bows, um, but this one looks okay. And I'm shuffling it up a little bit higher so it's more around the middle of the cake. And if you wanted to, you could secure the ribbon with a little bit of fresh buttercream in between the ribbon and the cake. And there it is, a cake that looks like a bunch of flowers. Thank you for watching. I share a new tutorial every week on a different technique to decorate a cake, and if you click the subscribe button, you won't miss a tutorial.